Hi students, so in this section I am going to talk about four of the most uh, misunderstood concepts in the respiratory system or uh, rather actually this is the one of the most uh, missed sections in the respiratory system I would rather say one of the most missed MCQ points that you would miss in the respiratory system so there are four important points here that I am going to elaborate I am sure that this will yield at least one MCQ mark in your error so let's quickly go into this video ok so this uh, first one so this is about vital capacity when I ask you to write about what uh, an equation for vital capacity you would obviously write this ok so vital capacity you know this graph vital capacity equals IRV plus TV plus expiratory reserve volume so basically what does that mean so vital capacity can be explained in two ways so remember so whatever the explanation in the resource book you must write in the exam if it is as, as a structured as a question but when it comes to MCQs it can be tricky let's try to work out whether the statements that I'm going to mention right now are correct or wrong ok the first one the maximum amount of air which can be inhaled after a full expiration again the same one the maximum amount of air which can be inspired fully inspired after a full expiration that is the first one second one the maximum amount of air which can be fully expired after a full inhalation maximum amount of air which can be fully expired after a full inspiration ok so you, if you know this the vital capacity equals inspired reserve volume plus tidal volume plus expired reserve volume both of those sentences are true so that is one area that you might miss in the MCUs because in the resource book both of those definitions haven't been mentioned but in the MCQs they can clearly ask to check whether you have this idea or not that is one thing in the second part ok so I can write vital capacity equals total lung capacity minus residual volume so you know the remaining part in the lung is known as residual volume even after a full expiration so residual volume if I mult if I subtract residual volume from okay from total lung capacity you know you are going to get this that means vital capacity so this is a very tricky uh, equation you must know because this can be asked in structure disease write another uh, another equation for vital capacity using uh, total lung capacity and residual volume so they can ask a question like that then you must write this and also this can be come in MCQs in the last 10 questions where you might if you just if you are just a student who just study or you, you just cram whatever in the resource book you obviously miss this uh, miss this MCQ so therefore please be alert so to total lung capacity minus residual volume is also equal to vital capacity ok so that is our first point so then I am going to talk about anatomical dead space you know we all know about anatomical dead space <coughs> so ok so anatomical dead space what is the definition so the definition would say uh, the amount of air which is retained in the branching tibios of the respiratory tract which is not directly in bowling but directly involving gaseous sections again the amount of air which is present in the respiratory tract in the branching tubules of the respiratory tract which are not directly involved in gaseous sections so in the research book if you just clearly go through it they have specifically mentioned what are these branching tubules so these branching tubules are trachea, bronchi as well as bronchioles so you know the anatomical dead space the volume is 150 milliliters 150 milliliters so this is where it becomes a little bit tricky when it comes to MCQs so if they have given an MCQ like this so anatomical dead space present inside the lungs is 150 milliliters is true or false the, this becomes tricky more tricky when it comes as the comes in the last five last ten or five when it is an ABCD question and when this comes as the third sentence or the fourth sentence you obviously are sure what is anatomy red space and obviously you are sure anatomy red space is only 150 milliliters so as soon as you see anatomy red space as soon as you see 150 milliliters you are obviously going to mark it as true but it is false because the anatomical dead space is not only located in lungs because the lung would only cover 
half of the bronchi and the bronchioles. Half of the bronchi and the bronchioles. The trachea is not covered by the lungs. So if they have mentioned the anatomical dead space in the lungs is 150 milliliters, that is totally false. So that is one aspect that you will obviously get miss in MCQs. <coughs> okay, then the third one. Third one is surfactant. Actually, you know about the surfactant, and the function of the surfactant is also to prevent lung collapse. Okay, so prevent lung collapse by increasing the surface tension or decreasing the surface tension. The students who are very very good at cramming, obviously they know it is decreasing surface tension. But I'm going to mention, uh, I'm going to mention the logic behind this. How you can easily work out without cramming each and every word. Okay, listen. So let's discuss what is surfactant here. How does surface tension affect the collapse of alveolar? So this is an alveolus, okay, this is an alveolus, so you know alveolus, alveoli are moist, so that here you have these water molecules, so this is one water molecule, one water molecule, one water molecule, one water molecule, so likewise there are water molecules lying in the, uh, in the epithelium, the internal lining of the alveoli, okay, so now what happens, during exhalation, during exhalation, air is inspired, during this lung alveoli, the radius of the lung alveoli actually get reduced, okay? So the lung alveoli radius get reduced. So now initially the radius would be like this, the, it is big like this, but now when the radius reduces, the alveolus becomes more like this. So now what happens? The gap between these water molecules actually get reduced. The gap between water molecules get reduced. So you know when the gap between the water molecules get reduced, if you have experience, if there is one water drop here and another water drop very close to the next uh, adjacent water drop, what will happen? Those two water drops get attracted to each other. So what happens when the, when the gaps between these two water molecules are less, these two are attracted to each other. So that so that there's an attraction force. So due to that attraction force, a surface tension is created. So water molecules exert inward force. Okay, water molecules exert inward force to this alveolar membrane. So what happens? So anyway, now the alveoli are contracting. That means they are reducing their radius. But now, addition to that. What happens now, due to the surface tension exerted by the water molecules, it exerts an inward pressure, inward force to this alveoli membrane. So that, due to the ex additional external force, which is an inward force, the alveoli will obviously be collapsed. Okay, it is just not contracted, it gets collapsed due to that additional inward force. So what happens by the surfact surfactant? So the function of surfactant is very, very easy. Okay. Surfactant would lie here. Surfactant would lie here. So what happens? When the alveoli are contracting during exhalation, surfactant, which is a lipid molecule, surfactant, which is a lipid molecule, which is water insoluble, lipid, water insoluble, so they go between, that means they occupy the space between these water molecules, so that when the alveoli are reducing their radius, these water molecules are not attracting together. So that attraction force is no longer there due to the absence of those attraction forces, this inward force which is the surface tension is also absent there. So that's why actually surfactant reduces the surface tension and thereby preventing lung collapse. So I hope you understand that. So it's really clear, crystal clear. So never by heart what is the function of the surface tension. Never by heart how does surface tension involve in preventing lung collapse. Okay, then the last one. So this is also very very tricky. So this is also a MCQ that I have come across. Okay, most of the students are pretty easy to get this wrong. <coughs> okay, the MCQ. During Zalawin, epic blood is moved down to prevent passage of food into the trachea. So you know, here there is trachea. Here this is my Adam's apple, so which is the larynx. So above the larynx you have the epic glottis. So in all of us also, what you have learned is during Zalovin, there is a leaf life epiglottis. The epiglottis will drop down and close the opening of the larynx, which is known as the glottis. Epi means above, glottis means the opening of the larynx. So epiglottis is situated above the larynx. So imagine this is the opening of the larynx. So now this epiglottis will move down and close this opening. 
So therefore, whatever the foods which are going can't go into the trachea. That is what we have learned in all of us as well. But remember, in all of us, they have clearly mentioned the true story. So just look at my Adam's apple. What happens when I am zolavid? Observe and what happens when I am zolavid in my saliva? Okay, so you would rather observe my Adam's apple actually, that is the larynx would go up rather than something else coming down to this position and close the trachea. Okay, so what happens during Zulavi, your trachea moves up, okay, your larynx moves up, your larynx moves up, so once your larynx moves up, so larynx will come, come together to a point where there is a connection between epiglottis and the glottis which is the opening of the larynx. So due to the movement of the larynx only, this epiglottis can epiglottis actually can close the glottis. Otherwise there wouldn't be a closure of the glottis. Imagine the larynx can't move upwards due to any deformity. The epiglottis can't move down. So still even though you have the epiglottis, the foot will can foot will go into your trachea if the movement of the larynx does not work properly. So you remember so the foot passage into the trachea during the loving is prevented not by epiglottis moving down but by larynx moving upwards so that the epiglottis can cover the opening of the larynx. So these are the four such instances in the respiratory tract so which you would miss especially in MCQs. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you got to know very crucial MCQ points. So if there are any other lessons that you want me to describe or you want me to discuss these important MCQ points, please put comments in the below in the video. Thank you so much for watching.